of your life. God saves the world through pregnancy and childbirth. He brings us salvation in that way. We're about to celebrate the coming of the Savior. Why aren't we about to celebrate the coming of the Savior by saying, oh yeah, the first Christmas, wasn't it wonderful? The sky opened up, and there was a big earthquake, and down came the King of Kings on a royal throne with millions of angels surrounding him. Why in the world couldn't he have come that way? And the fact of the matter is, he could have. Or... The first Christmas, isn't it marvelous? God prophesied for thousands of years that he was going to come. And then on one day there was a shaking of the earth and the ocean opened up and it parted and there was a big hole in the ground and up from there in grand and splendor glory rose the king of kings. Why didn't he do it that way? Or, oh, there appeared a man in the middle of the city and it was at the entrance of the palace and he was dressed in bright robes and nobody could look. We could write the scripture ourselves. Nobody could look at it and the eyes of those who dared to look at it were burned out of their sockets. You can imagine what the reading would sound like. And there was music and there were trumpets that were blaring. Why couldn't he have come that way? These would all be supernatural phenomena, brothers and sisters. And God, he can do all kinds of supernatural phenomena, but he decides not to. He uses childbirth. He uses pregnancy. He uses a womb. He uses an embryo. He uses a zygote. He uses a fetus to save the world. And you know what? God doesn't change. He didn't change from the time of Samson to the time of Zechariah, and he didn't change from the time of Jesus Christ to 2014. He didn't change because he doesn't change, because he's not going to change, because he still uses pregnancy and childbirth to save the world. And barrenness is still a curse. And the blessing of life is still a blessing. And salvation will not come if we can't welcome the child, and humanity would not survive if we keep throwing the child away. This is what we take from these readings and from this feast of Christmas. We don't need an angel to tell us to defend life. We don't even need this to tell us to defend life. You know what we need? All we need? is this, our own humanity. Are we alive? Is that good? Do we have a body? Are we human? It's all you need. You don't need any authorization to defend life. You don't need any commendation to defend life. You don't need anybody praising you to defend life. You don't need anybody paying you to defend life. You don't need anybody patting you on the back to defend life. You don't need anybody doing anything to you to defend life. As a matter of fact, if the whole world is set against you, you defend life. And if a million people come to you and say you should be doing something else, you defend life. And if a million people come to you with a million other issues and say, oh, but this is the most important thing, and that's the most important thing, and the other thing is the most important thing, you defend life. Because you know what? That thing and that thing and that other thing aren't going to be things at all without life. The scriptures are clear. Even supernatural revelations... Even the reality of the Incarnation, the very action of God marrying humanity to himself, it revolves around, it points to, it's based on, it's founded upon pregnancy and childbirth. Brothers and sisters, Pope John Paul II said to Father Paul Marx, and he said to me, that this is the most important work on earth. We don't believe that because a pope said it, however. We believe it because human reason says it. We believe it because you don't have to believe it. Abortion isn't wrong because the Catholic Church says so. It's the other way around. The Catholic Church says so because it's wrong.